All right. So hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 39 of Warsaw Quantum Computing Group meetings. And today we have a special guest. Marcin Pojeni will give a talk titled Reinforce and Learning for Quantum Technologies. So Marcin, welcome. It's our pleasure to have you here. Thanks for accepting our invitation. Uh, before we start, just a few announcements. So uh, this meeting is recorded as usually. So hopefully the video will be available uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, and if you have any questions uh, during the lecture, uh, please post your questions on our chat. So uh, the, at the end, there will be Q&A session. But uh, Martin, would it be fine for you just to interrupt if there are some urgent, important questions? Can we, can we interrupt you during the lecture? Yes, of course, of okay. course. All right, so we'll try to do it. Thanks. Uh, and um, two more things. So before we start, we would like to thank our strategic partners, SNART and Cogit for supporting us and thank our honorary partners for helping us in advertising this meetup. And I think we can start. So now I will stop sharing my slides and uh, Martin, if you are ready, the Zoom is yours, so welcome and thank you once again. We can start. Uh, okay, so thank you for the invitation and the introduction. And let me share my screen. Uh, uh, I hope it's coming. Can you, uh, okay, can you yes. see the slides? Yes, yes we, I can, at least okay. I can see your slides. Mm -hmm. Okay. So due, okay, so due to technical reason, I cannot be in the presentation mode. However, I can, I think we, we can manage. So, okay. So let's start with the, with the title. So the title of the talk uh, is Reinforcement Learning for Quantum Technologies. And uh, this talk uh, will be mainly about introducing the basics of the reinforcement learning, uh, its framework. Uh, it will be the main uh, part of the, the, the whole presentation. And uh, we'll talk briefly how to implement uh, reinforcement learning with deep learning networks. And we'll talk about two examples which uh, can be uh, very important for the uh, near intermediate scale quantum devices, namely for the uh, quantum state preparation and the uh, quantum circuit optimization with the help of the reinforcement learning. And be, be, before I go to to the main part, I would like to share uh, our uh, our new uh, work on the iHive, which was released today. And this is a quite comprehensive uh, introduction to the application of machine learning in quantum sciences. And the topics covered range from phase classification of uh, quantum uh, models to also reinforcement learning and quantum machine learning. So uh, anyone who is interested in those topics, uh, please uh, visit. Uh, this uh, archive and all uh, comments are welcome. We, we are open to, to get any feedback from the community. So let's start with, with the outline of the talk. So at the beginning, we will briefly talk about a new paradigm uh, of the programming, uh, which is knowledge to solving different tasks. And we will see that the reinforcement learning is a little bit different comparing to the standard knowledge based uh, approaches in machine learning. And uh, we'll talk about mathematical backgrounds uh, for the reinforcement learning, and we will discuss two most common and mo two most uh, important methods uh, for reinforcement learning, namely value function methods, uh, with Q learning as the example and policy graded methods uh, with the reinforced algorithm as the example. And at the end, of course, we will uh, shortly talk about two examples for uh, quantum computers and uh, NISC devices. 
So let's start with the knowledge-based programming. And the knowledge-based programming can be used as the uh, paradigm to implementation code totally opposite to the traditional programming. In the traditional programming, we develop the code, the, the, the program, we input the uh, program with some initial data. Our code is uh, computed on some machine, let's say on some computer, and we obtain the results. And this is the traditional programming we know from everyday uh, applications uh, we use today. But the recently emerged field of the machine learning, um, which is known for the many decades. However, this is very popular to the computational power of the machines and the amount of data. We have different paradigms to develop the code. We have set of input data, namely label data. We know what's given data means. And we know what is the desired results of some computation uh, on the inputs data. And the machine learning um, approach allows you to prepare the computations, the computations at which we uh, result in the having the program, the model, the, 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 the program which solves the task of uh, our desire. At the beginning, there is no program which uh, is explicitly coded, but at the end of the machine learning approach, we have basically the program which can be utilized. And this approach uh, is uh, known as the knowledge-based programming. And in this figure, we can see the, the different uh, levels of this knowledge-based approach to, to develop the codes. And on the very broad scope, we can think about artificial intelligence about artificial systems, artificial programs or some machines, which can gather the knowledge uh, stored in some databases and without any explicit programming, only about, uh, only through the gathered knowledge, machine can solve some desired tasks. But this is the ultimate goal of the artificial intelligence and of course, we are far away from reaching this point. We are in the something less complicated. We are in the regime of the machine learning when we can have some specific tasks with some specific methods and algorithms which can be solved via only pro providing the, the data. And the inner circle of this machine learning algorithm is formed by deep learning when we utilize the fact that the extraction of the internal structure of the data, extraction of data features and so on, can be done through the deep neural networks in, par in particular, and in general, in the neural networks. So highly nonlinear, many dimensional functions. And this, this paradigm of the knowledge-based programming is usually considered in the terms of unsupervised learning and the supervised learning. In the unsupervised learning, we don't have uh, data label, labeled uh, from us. We just allow the machine to feature some common properties and uh, extract the, 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 the most common features from the data. In the supervised learning, we provide the label data on which machines can provide the neural network model and uh, our program in this machine learning uh, approach. But there is new supervised, uh, there's new, new, new approach based on the reinforcement learning. And the, re the reinforcement learning approach takes the fact that there is no teacher in this scheme, the machine, tries to solve the problem. Now we can say very generally some problems, some tasks without being explicitly teached by the provided data. And today the reinforcement learning can be considered as the way of finding the best strategy for some, let's say, game. 
And I think the to get the best intuition to to, to reinforce machine learning and what this is about is to consider the game of Go, is the Chinese board game. And in 2015, uh, the code developed by uh, DeepMind, AlphaGo, won the match with the best Go player in the world. And the complexity of this problem of playing the Go game is uh, enormous, is huge, because this is 10 to the uh, almost 200 possible configurations. And it is, of course, uh, sure that it cannot be programmed explicitly to consider any possible move, find the best move, and play against the human. And as I said, in 2015, uh, the, the code uh, developed by the uh, DeepMind called AlphaGo was initially trained on the experts' games. And next, this knowledge was used to play against the best uh, Go player. And the machine, of course, won this, uh, this match. And it was the big, big breakthrough in the, in the field of reinforcement learning. However, this was not true the reinforcement learning, not pure approach, because the initial uh, games were provided to the machine. And later on, in 2017, DeepMind provided the new algorithm called AlphaGo Zero, where machine was not explicitly uh, provided the data of the previous games. It means that the um, AlphaGo Zero uh, construct the model of the game by its own, totally by its own uh, understanding of the game and consider the best strategies, extracting the best strategies. And the, 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 the last step was in 2019 when Mu0, uh, the code also by DeepMind, was developed. And this code was even not learned the rules of the game. And the machine itself provided the model of the game what are the rules providing the best possible uh, winning strategy? And the the, the paper, the, the DeepMind paper uh, in the Nature, they show what is the error rating uh, between reinforcement learning, the first alpha zero, uh, alpha go zero go zero, supervised learning, so the first alpha zero and the reference uh, L rating between Li and AlphaGo. So we can see that blue line initially goes lower than the supervised learning, but in the long term run, it beats even the superhuman level of the, of the game. It means that reinforcement learning can really extract the best possible strategies in the very complicated environments. Uh, and it was the, the, the break in the field because no one can beat for now the, the, this algorithm with this model provided uh, solutions. And the, another quite uh, famous example is the uh, playing the video games, Atari video games by the machine. Uh, this is like uh, 48 different video games and each of the game was played by the machine in the following way, that the uh, algorithm was obtaining as the input screenshot of the, of the game at the moment. And through the set of convolutional neural networks, it was parsing uh, to the best possible action uh, taken at this given moment of time. And during this evolution, after many epochs of training, it was fine that the best uh, players are much below the score obtained that comparing to the uh, machine. And this was published also in Nature in 2015 and 2019 uh, for the, the same approach was done for the StarCraft 2. It's much more complicated game compared to Atari games or Dota 2. So this is also last paper on the ar ar archive. So all those shows that Reinforcement learning 
is we uh, go to tool to find the solution and to find the strategy in the very complicated environments without knowing at hand what are good or, or what are bad choices. But there is no teacher uh, who can say us we should do this or we should do that at the beginning of our game. So as the introduction, uh, this, this, uh, show, this example of games uh, can serve us to define the most important terms in the reinforcement learning. So there are uh, three terms which are uh, building blocks of the all reinforcement learning framework. So first one is the state of the environment. Uh, which belongs to the state space S. Second one is the action taken by the agent, and it belongs to the action space capital A. And R is the obtained reward, uh, reward obtained by the agent after taking the action A at the state S. And sequences of state action reward forms the trajectory. And the ultimate goal, the common goal for all reinforcement learning algorithms is to maximize the total return G capital. So on the depicted on the figure uh, on the right, we, we, we can see kind of loop. We have agent who being in the state takes some action. This action influence or in changes the state of the environment agent obtain the reward and make the observation and based on that observation it takes another action and with this loop the proper strategy is developed and now we will go to mathematical foundations to, to mathematical uh, language which allows us to construct the strategy for finding the best uh, actions in the in the game so first uh, let us define something which is called uh, the dynamics of the environment which is the conditional probability p of s prime and r given the state s of the environment and take an action a so it means that what is the what is the probability of getting reward r and transform the state of the environment to S prime, where the agent took action A, while the environment was in the state S. And this is, uh, of course, in the in the Markov process uh, language, meaning that the change from the state at time t into the state at time t plus one. Doesn't belong, that doesn't depend to the previous history of the environment. And we can define state transition probability. So this is environment dynamic probability summed over all possible rewards. So this is probability of finding system is environment in straight S prime, given the system at S after take action A. Then you can take also expected reward for the state action part when we calculate expectation value of the obtained reward. And the central, central term of the reinforcement learning algorithm is the policy. And policy is the probability distribution of taking action A where the agent uh, finds the environment in the state S. So this is mapping between state and the uh, actions. And this probability, uh, this policy uh, is the central object of interest in the all algorithms because we want to find the best possible policy which provides the best possible return. And the policy, of course, acts along the trade zero. We take the action A0 and obtain reward R1, and so on and so on. So we can calculate what is the probability of given trajectory tau. 
So this is, of course, a product of system state probabilities times policy at times t. And we can calculate, define the discounted return g along the trajectory. So following the policy p and consider given trajectory of events, we can accumulate total return. And this return is the object we want to maximize. And we provide here something which is called discount factor uh, gamma. And discount factor gamma uh, is the number uh, between zero and one, which allows us to prevent agent to take the actions which provides to the very fast uh, large return, but this can be suboptimal choices. And the discount factor allows us to uh, kill the intermediate good actions, but to choose the actions which will be very beneficial for in the long term goal. Any questions? So there, there are some questions uh, on our chat, but there is a question okay. about uh, quantum reinforcement learning. So I believe we can wait. Uh, there was also uh, a question uh, about. Uh, this video game example video games uh, there was a question aren't yes. video games also about speed of physical response like buttons or joysticks so um, there was okay 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 uh non-integer problems uh then i think we added to non-integer problems but with the quantum reinforcement learning we have to define what we we mean uh, by the terms I think we can uh, we can go back to this question later. Yes. Uh, video games. So video games. So basically, this is feedback. I mean, no one is playing with the joystick and so on. This is the feedback in the in, in the in the code. So basically, machine is uh, playing. I mean, without the controllers. Explicitly, I mean, the the, 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 the drivers for the controllers are on the software level. Uh, so I think this button is not the is not the problem. Uh, okay. So yeah. So it doesn't matter, right? But so okay. Can, but yeah. this is number of points scored uh, in the in the uh, in the games. Okay. So it's the only matter of points, not the speed of scored points. Okay. Uh, okay. We can go further. I think. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, we now, okay, we were in the point of the discount factor. So there's also one last term we should define what is the reinforcement learning uh, in the model free or model based approaches. In the model free approaches, we have no information about env environments. And what is the probability between state and the action? So basically, agent has to make the trial and error approach and try different actions and observe what is the output of the action. And this is uh, in the contrary to the model based reinforcement learning, where we have access to the state of the system, take an action, and the obtaining reward. And in the model based reinforcement learning, we can use neural networks to model the, uh, the, the environment. And these neural networks are later on uh, forms of the feed for the, for, the, for the agent. And it was the case for the mu zero uh, DeepMind code, where they provided the, uh, the, the, the neural network model for the environment. Okay. And we are mostly interested in the model free approaches because they are somehow agnostic to, to the problem at hand. They are like uh, universal toolboxes, more or less. And we are not restricted to the details of the model itself. We, we can just play our, our machine and we can get the, the, the results. And are the value from functions and the Bellman equations. And we can make the observation that 
given state S of the environment and given action A taken at this uh, state, it has some value under a given policy. So what does it mean? We can define set of three uh, quantities, which are basically, uh, we, we are called state value functions V, action value function Q and advantage A. And we can start for the basic, uh, for the very first, the state value function V is the expectation value of, of uh, total return. And this is defined for the particular state of the environment. After we take the action following the policy pi. So this is does the expectation value of the total discounted total return uh, following policy pi. Similar uh, definition is for the action value function Q. So this is function which gives the expectation value when we follow the policy P at, at some initial moment of time, we take action A in the state S between uh, action value function and the state value function. And it can be shown quite, quite easily that uh, V is the average of the Q we will see in the, in the moment. So now let's focus on the state value function. And we, we can uh, see that uh, expression for the uh, total return is the recursive formula. And we, when we plug this recursive formula into the definition of the state value function, we obtain somehow self-consistent equation for the V of P. Similarly, we can prepare something for the state uh, action value function Q. And this is of course also the, the recursive formula. And you can show that the state value function is the weighted sum of the action value functions with the weight given the, the policy A. So now it looks like a little bit uh, jungle with the equations and nothing uh, important we can extract from these uh, equations. However, there is uh, some need for these equations because they allow us to define uh, policy partial ordering. So we can ask the question, what does it mean what, that one policy is better than the another? Or how we can say how much one policy is better than the other, another policy? And the state value function provides us this definition that we can say that the, for given state S and two policies P and pi prime, if V of pi is larger than V of P prime, it means that pi is better than pi prime. So we can same some order in the, in the old policies. It means that there exists one policy pi, pi star, which is the best. It means that it maximizes the expectation value of the total return. And the equation, the Bellman equation is the, are the equation for the optimal policy pi and pi prime through the uh, state and action value functions. So we can see that best policy maximizes the Q and V functions. But still we can see that this is something uh, connected and we just run with the equations. But with those definitions, we can define what is the best policy and the best action. So as we said, this is maximizing the, the state function uh, over the given starting point S in the environment. And those equations can be solved uh, basically in some or numerically or, or some analytical uh, methods, only in the case when we know the dynamics of the environment, only in the case that we know what is the probability of finding the S prime and determining the reward R 
after taking the action S, uh, uh, action A at the state S. But in principle, it means that we have model of the environment, but in general, we do not have this model. So it means that we cannot use the Bellman optimality equations in this form. We have to find some another way to solve those equations. And there are two approaches uh, based on the value functions and based on the policy gradients. So value-based methods are basically iterative way of solving the Bellman optimality equation, but the update rule. So left-hand side of the equation is the updated value of the state value function, and the right-hand side is the update with the so-called learning rate eta. And the problem with this approach is that this learning takes place only after taking the full trajectory of the episode. So we have some trajectory of events, we play the game, and we look what is the value of the uh, total return, and we change the total return according to, to, the, to the update rule. And there is the alternative to, to this approach, which is called temporal difference, so-called bootstrapping update, where update take place at every single time step. And this update take place both for, it can be both for the state uh, function as well as for the action function. And it can be, uh, it can be an article uh, proof that this iterative update converges in the uh, infinite limit of time steps to the unique solution of the Bellman equations. And this was the, 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 the basic approach to solving the equation through the, uh, the value state function. And there are two different variants of this uh, iterative procedure. We can replace uh, the Q of pi by weighted sum of the q of pi over all possible actions, and this is called as the salsa algorithm, or we can replace the q of pi as the taking the maximum value of q over all possible actions, a prime having the system uh, environment stack S prime. And uh, the second approach is called the q learning algorithm, and we will discuss about this a little bit more. So, so far we were talking about reinforcement learning and all those uh, things were quite, uh, quite known over the last uh, tens of years and even more. But the new thing uh, with the reinforcement learning is the utilization of the neural networks to model, for example, a Q value function. And the, the, the Q learning with the neural networks, which is called the deep Q learning, utilizes the fact that we model the action value function by the given neural network. So basically, uh, input layer has as many uh, neurons as possible actions, and it is the encoding, it, it encodes the mapping between state action uh, value function. And this uh, Q of P, of course, depends on the neural network trainable parameters, and we define the, the update rule according to the Q learning approach. When the theta are updated after taking the gradient the times gradient of the Q function according to, to parameters of the theta. And this uh, after, after the training, we have the model for which we put the as the input, the state of the system, and of the output, we have the probability distribution of best possible actions. And in, in this way, we solve the Bellman optimality equation having the Q function, and we take the maximal of the output for the given state S. So this was basically the uh, idea for the value state function. And the second uh, approach for the Reinforcement learning algorithms is the uh, called policy gradient methods. So 
This method is based on the Monte Carlo sampling through the different trajectories. So basically, we sample many different trajectories. We play the game. We track total reward after each episode. We make uh, and we want to maximize the expectation value over the many, many different uh, episodes. And the crucial thing uh, in the policy gradients is that we parameterize our policy pi as the um, as the sum ansatz, which depends on the trainable parameters theta. And there is the uh, this is all possible due to the fact. Uh, of the uh, results of the policy gradient theorem, which basically says that that we want to have the update rule through the gradient descent or ascent, depending on uh, what is the objective function we want to maximize. And we have to calculate gradient with respect of theta parameters of the expectation value. And the point is that gradient of the expectation value is not, not the same as the expectation value of the gradients. And the policy gradient theorem says that we can calculate explicitly this gradient of the expectation value when we will make the expectation value of the gradients of the logarithm of the policy pi. So maybe this is not so clear. So let's go through the, through the example. So we are interested in the maximizing expectation value of total reward or total return, sorry. So we have given probability tau depending on the trainable parameters theta uh, through the policy pi times the dynamics of the, of the environment. And the expectation value is the, of course, weighted sum of the g of tau times pita theta of tau. And we want to calculate the gradient of this expectation value. So taking the, the, the log logarithmic tree of the derivative, we can show that this is g of tau times p of tau times the, the gradient of the log of the p of theta. We know that the p of theta dependence lies only in the policy pi. So it means that this gradient takes only non-zero fx on the log of pi. And with that, we can show that the gradient of the expectation value can be presented as the expectation value of the objective function g of tau times gradient of the logarithm of the uh, policy pi. So with that, we have the way of calculating the gradient through the Monte Carlo sample. So we play a game many times. We calculate different trajectories and the expected return. And based on that, we provide the update rule for the, the iterative update for the weights. And it can be also shown that this procedure provides the exact maximum value of the expectation value through the Monte Carlo sampling after many trajectories. And this method was also uh, uh, known. And the new thing, like recent years new thing, is to model the policy pi as the neural network. Basically, we model policy pi as the uh, probability distribution. So this is normalized to one. And we define function x of sa, which is called action preference. So take action a in given state state s and this uh, function x is the parameterized uh, deep neural network and this neural network is uh, of course trained through uh, minimizing the loss function and there is one uh, one additional trick which is subtracting something which is called baseline and the baseline basically is the, is the mean value of the total return along the given trajectory. This trick makes training more stable. Okay, so this was the basically the, the last part for the introduction to the reinforcement learning. Are there any questions? They are. Okay.
Yep, we have we have some questions. So uh, yes. maybe you can come back to I think it was slide twenty nine probably or close to that. Uh, or but here, uh, here we also have the 29? the capital T letter. Uh, so there was T, a question. T. Okay, yes, what sure, what does it sure. mean? Because I believe it's so uh, so, the so, same. so basically is the is the number of steps or or the how long is our trajectory or how long we want to play the game. So basically, the, the longer we play the game, the, 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 the longer episode, the, the, the more uh, experience we can get. And from the practical reasons, this is, of course, it cannot be infinite. It has to be finite uh, time, uh, time span of, of the given episode. So basically, it's this time, how long we play the game, broadly speaking. Okay. okay. Good. Now, uh, next question. So there was is an the question. neural network? Yes, go on. Yeah. Okay, is the neural network predicting the environment learned as well? Uh, yes, so we can, so not in the Q learning, uh, uh, not in the reinforcement learning, but in the Q learning, basically, we can also have something like behavior of the environment. So we can see how the state changes state of the environment changes after the taking the given action at given state. So basically this is something uh, which inherently is incorporated into the Q learning, uh, Q -learning methods. Okay. Capital T. Okay. Okay, someone answered. Capital T is the left of the learning experiment. Okay, I think this is all questions up to now. Right? Okay. Yeah, we can go on. Okay, and we can go on. Yes? Uh, there's also one question whether quantum reinforcement learning uh, can be also for continuous problems, but we can answer later. So the tentative answer was uh, that. Okay, uh, but, yes, but, it... okay but, uh, yeah, but, but in general, we can answer right now. Uh, this is a good question. Basically, like uh, the rule of thumb is that reinforcement, I mean, it, the answer is not only for the quantum reinforcement learning in general. The policy gradient methods works well for the continuous actions. And we'll talk in the example about continue, continuous action space. And the Q-learning works well for the finite uh, or the discrete, discrete sets of actions and the state of the environment. But this is not only for the quantum reinforcement learning, but for the all reinforcement learning tasks. Okay. Uh, so we finish with the policy gradient theorem, and uh, so just to summarize, the, the most important part of the policy gradient theorem is to show how to calculate the gradient of the expectation values, which will be used for the parameters update, through calculating the expectation value of the modified, let's say, objective function. Uh, so this was, you know, and now now we have the last last part, which is uh, examples. I choose two examples for the quantum simulators and let's say NISQA devices. And we start with the quantum feedback control. So the, the, the paper was published in 2019 in the PerX in the group of Flora Marquat. And the, the, the system is as follow. Uh, our goal is to stabilize the cavity, uh, the, the, the quantum cavity in the given Fox state of the photon field. So we consider single mode cavity. However, this cavity is not perfect. There is the leakage of the signal out of the cavity. And also the cavity is externally derived. The, 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 the mode has some inputs. So there's the gain and the loss in the, in the system. And our goal is to adjust the drive of the amplitude, the, the, the amplitude of the drive in such a way that in the cavity, we have a photon field, for example, with only single fog, uh, only single photon. So we have very well defined fog state for, for the cavity. So this is basically the, 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 the reinforcement learning uh, scheme. Our environment is the cavity, cavity, uh, has some leakage mode and it can be measured. Agent takes this measurement as the input 
parse this data and as the output of the agent you have drive uh, displacement i mean the drive the, the drive of the laser uh, acting on the cavity and with this look we, we can stabilize the the, the system so um, we have to basically define what is the target state of the cavity to so that the target state of the cavity is the state with a single single uh, photon and as the reward function we basically uh, define the fidelity between target state and the uh, density matrix of the of the cavity uh, which is simulated numerically and the evolution uh, for the uh, for, for the Liouville equation takes into account unitary dynamics of the uh, cavity mode as well as the dissipation of the cavity plus the uh, measurement of the of the of the signal outside of the cavity and all those terms are taken into account is calculated the, the devolution of this is calculated and the fidelity with the uh, target state uh, uh, forms the reward function and this is the input for the for the for the agent and based on that the agent provides the proper proper driving which stabilizes the state in, in the system so basically this is a very simple idea on the on the conceptual level uh, but on the deeper level the policy agent methods was uh, applied for for this particular problem where we have of course continuous uh, state action and uh, space because uh, we can continuously change the drive of the of the external drive of the laser and the last example I, I provide, of course, references for, for this works. And the last uh, example is the quantum circuit optimization. So basically, the, the problem is as follows, that today in the new devices, to, to, uh, to, to, to have some quantum algorithm, we have to program it through the set of quantum gates. And there is no uh, unique sequence of gates which realizes the particular particular uh, quantum algorithm and moreover the gates are not perfect so we can expect that the if we have too many gates in the system the the, the algorithm is uh, very very uh, problematic on the level of, of error correction and the, the, the more gates we have the more errors appear and the goal is to design the quantum circuit in the most optimal way by implementing the less possible number of quantum gates so in this uh, in this uh, particular problem the environment is the given implementation of the quantum circuit with the set of gates we, we consider given the circuit uh, representation is uh, is the input for the agent and the agent take the action and the action is some change uh, in the circuit representation for example it can exchange two neighboring uh, gates or it can remove uh, some gate or su add some gate so there's the finite uh, set of rules which can be prepared by the by the agent and this new quantum circuit uh, after transformation is put to the environment. Environment prepares the calculation, the computations on the on the new circuit, and the return function is, for example, the total fidelity of the algorithm or the depth of the circuit or number of the gates used in the in the problem. And uh, this is done with the with the Q-learning approach because we have finite set of, of rules. And uh, uh, this is totally autonomous process. And <clears throat> this is very, very important because this approach can use the information about given physical implementation of the particular gate. Maybe one gate uh, in some particular hardware representation are uh, slower than the other, or have, they, are, they are slower, but maybe they have better fidelity. And this, this method, this reinforcement learning methods can be used for the future quantum compilers, 
where the compiler can optimize the given uh, circuit for particular algorithm, having all information about hardware implementation of the particular set of gates. And uh, yeah, so th th this is a quite new paper uh, on archive from, uh, okay, one year uh, has uh, one year from 2020. Uh, but yes, so, so th this is something still ongoing uh, uh, direction, also on the level of the uh, quantum error corrections, which transformation learning can also be, be used. However, uh, with those two examples, as we would like to uh, thank you for your attention. And that's all. Okay, great. Thank you, Martin. Um, do we have any other questions, Martin? Because I think that um, already answered all the questions that were posted in our chat. So maybe one uh, general question, Martin, how do you think, yes. uh, how, how uh, this area may evolve? So what, what are currently uh, the most promising uh, applications of uh, reinforcement learning, let's say, or how, how do you think how this area may look in the future? And assuming that someone would like to start doing research, in this domain, uh, how uh, yes, sure. he or she so should start. I think this connection between. Mm -hmm. Yes, go on. Mm -hmm. So I think it should be, uh, it could be cons considered as the merging the reinforcement learning and the, the example I, I showed last one the quantum, uh, the circuit optimization and quantum error correction. So the, the these devices. Today can very be benefits from the reinforcement learning approaches. So the optimization of the of the codes, uh, I think this is the, the direction to go. That to automatically uh, automatize the uh, formation of the algorithm and the, the 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 circuits to make the most optimal. And if someone wants to go in the direction, I would consider to learn some. Uh, library for the quantum machine learning, like the penny lane, for example, and use methods from the deep deep learning or reinforcement learning, and try to to find some problem which can be solved for for with, the, with this tool. Mm -hmm. uh, and the next thing, I think that the very nice and active uh, active uh, research idea, which is called neural search uh, algorithm, basically the idea for which machine finds the optimal topology of the neural network for the given problem automatically. It okay. means that there is no, uh, there's no at hand provided topology for the problem, but the, providing the rules of gluing all together different, uh, different uh, topology of the neural networks, different layers and so on and so on, provides, providing this set of rules Forming the environment, we can use the new uh, the, the, we can use the reinforcement learning for finding the best possible topology for the given particular problem. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So this is called neural, uh, neural search uh, architecture, and of course this is very complicated on the computational level, but hopefully merging this with the Google algorithms on the, on the quantum computers when the finding different databases, the elements, uh, so the power, the, the, the speed up for the for, for the quantum computing, and the reinforcement learning can match this into one nice future direction. So the finding the best possible topology for the given problem. Okay, nice. All right. Uh, any more questions? So now we can just read some. Uh, I have a question. If I yes, may. go on. Uh, thank you for an interesting presentation. Uh, my question is, sorry if it's maybe not a very wise one. Uh, are there, are you familiar with any converse connections with quantum algorithms for reinforcement learning, but in the opposite way? So are there any quantum algorithms that help or facilitate reinforcement learning algorithms to learn faster or uh, better in some aspects? So. I, I don't know uh, at this moment, I, I cannot say that, okay, um, 
I, I don't know. So, uh, so, so uh, I don't know, but I think that uh, what I mentioned about the neural search algorithm, that with the, let's say, we have uh, a normal set of different topologies of the neural networks when we can match together, and we have to find in the old databases different different connections. And we can use, for example, the Groover search algorithm for, five, for, for parsing such a database for the future quantum computers. So this is on the imagination how, how the quantum algorithms can help in the reinforcement learning in the opposite. Mm -hmm. But I don't know an example uh, right now. Yeah, that inspired my question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. And maybe, maybe just to answer, I think that I can recall that there, there are some uh, articles published at least on archive uh, on this one. Oh, I, I guess that Mateusz has just uh, shared one of them uh, probably. So let me check. Parameterized quantum policies for reinforcement learning. Uh, so th this is an example. So so uh, there, there are such research works for sure. Uh, so if, if someone is okay. interested, uh, there is a Facebook group that's called Quantum AI, uh, where I'm also one of the moderators. And uh, from time to time, we publish such articles there. So uh please please join or follow uh, to stay up to date as well uh, there are also two more questions um the one i think the one is uh, similar so also related probably to how quantum computing can enhance machine learning in general so there is a question that okay so in uh, machine learning neural network the layers uh, so in, in layers of neural networks uh, we just calculate um, the activation of uh, um uh, of um, of a function which is um just multiplication of weights by uh, the input plus the bias so and now the question is is it possible to change this multiplication uh weights times uh, the input step into some q q uh some function uh q uh with x step where, where q uh, is okay. probably the quantum part so, i guess okay. mm -hmm. So to have something it's like quantum, quantum neurons, I guess, right? So the, I know that there are also such research works, but maybe Marcin can also uh, say a bit more about it. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't elaborate on on this topic on this quantum perceptrons because uh, I'm not expert in the quantum perceptrons, uh, and I think. Uh, I cannot answer this question. I, I will simply okay. put like that. Uh, that's that, that's fine. I think the, no the, 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 taking the take, yeah, but I would say that the, the the nature of the quantum perceptron is uh, not something that we uh, we have new nonlinearity or some superposition. It's not like that uh, because the nonlinearity very often is like the does the fidelity between input and output. Mm -hmm for the simplest model of the quantum perceptor. Mm -hmm. And in this particular problem, the, the, the quantum part provides only the different nonlinearity. But we know that any nonlinearity in the neural networks multilayer perceptrons can be replaced by the any other nonlinearity. So there is no additional gain, I would say. Okay, good. Uh, so I, I've just also shared a link to uh, a Wikipedia article about quantum neural networks, and in particular, there is a section about something like quantum perceptron. So and th there are some references, so if someone is interested, you can just check it out. And there is one more question from uh, uh, Ivan, if I understood correctly, in one of the last mentioned papers, they use the fidelity as a reward function. Uh, the I see. Yes, in a realistic setting where measurements need many copies of the same state, can you still evaluate the fidelity easily. Okay, so oh, sure. So, so this particular, uh, I have some problem with the connection. Okay, so uh, in this particular set, this is non-demolition uh, measurement because we we this is kind of ancilla measurement that we have the signal which doesn't affect match the state of the uh, cavity uh, itself. So this is leakage signal. Uh, so we can monitor this continuously because the, the, we have the gain because we provide the signal, the energy to the system and we have the loss. 
So this is in this feedback loop, we can monitor uh, on time the, the, the whole experiment. So there is no, there is no collapse in this in this sense. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, let me check. There's one more message. Yeah, so Ivan just said thanks. So uh, yeah, there are some nice comments on our chat, and it looks that uh, our participants really liked uh, this lecture. So do we have? Any more questions? Last chance to ask. If not, then I think that we can finish. So Martin, thank you uh, once again for a really interesting and great uh, presentation. Uh, before we end the meeting, let me maybe thank just uh, share my slides uh, for the last time because I would like to invite uh, all of you to attend our next meeting. So first of all, I would like to thank once again our strategic partners, Snart and Kogi, we thank them for supporting us. And we thank our honorary partners for helping us in advertising uh, our meetups. And uh, we would like to invite you to attend our next uh, episode. It will be just in two weeks uh, from now, Ozan Salehi from Turkey uh, will give a talk about applications of quantum computing uh, to solve the traveling salesman problem. So it um, seems to be interesting. So we invite you to join, of course. And if you like um, our meetups, uh, we also invite you to just uh, subscribe to our mailing list, um, follow our uh, YouTube channel and uh, Facebook fan page, join our group. Um, so let's stay in touch. And uh, let me just check the chat once again. Uh, there was a question, can you share the slides? And will the slides and recording be shared? So we'll try to upload the recording to our YouTube channel. So here you can see uh, the link and you can easily find the channel of the Quantum AI Foundation or uh, recordings from the Warsaw Quantum Computing Group meetings uh, on the YouTube. And there will be also a link on our website. So for sure you will be able to find um, uh, the recording. And uh, of course, it will be also announced uh, on our Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn profiles, uh, and uh, by email to all participants who uh, registered earlier. Uh, what else? Um, regarding the slides, I don't know. Uh, Martin, would you like to share the slides somehow? We can think about it yes. as well. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. It's not, not a problem. All right. So uh, if you want, you can just maybe upload it somewhere to Google Drive and just send me a link so I can just of course, uh, sure. forward the link to, uh, to our participants. All right. Cool. Uh, thank you. Thanks once again, Martin. Thanks for a great presentation. Thank you. Also answering all the questions. Um, I would also like to thank once again to all of you for coming and we hope to see you next time. So I will now stop recording.